in the grand scheme of things, I wasn't that close to death, but proximity to death, it's, it's one of those things where the only meaningful measurements are relative ones. And it was definitely the closest I've ever been. It happened, it wasn't really during the heart attack itself. It was during the catheterization afterwards. So if you're not familiar with the procedure, apparently they start off going in through your wrist and they snake their little doohickey all the way around your heart. But that's not always a viable route. So they reserve the ability to go into your femoral artery through your groin if that fails. So what that means for the patient is that I'm laying on the table with my hands strapped down like Dexter's about to collect a blood sample. I got, I got a hospital gown pulled up to my neck and a little towel draped over my dick after I've like been forcibly manscaped by two old ladies doing shtick. And then they start pumping me full of drugs. <sighs> Needless to say, it was all a bit surreal. So I'm laying there. I, I'm drifting in and out of consciousness throughout the procedure. They don't knock you out. They just give you good drugs. And they start off going through my wrist, right? But apparently my veins spasmed too much and they had to switch to the femoral artery. And I didn't really understand what was happening. All I knew was that something had gone wrong and there seemed to be a palpable sense of panic in the room. Now, to, to be fair, there probably wasn't. I was still drifting in and out and dreams were freely commingling with reality. But what I sensed was panic. And I've been conditioned by TV and movies for decades to think that anytime anything goes wrong during a surgery, it means the patient is going to die. And in that moment, I felt exactly that. I felt like I was going to die. But strangely enough, none of the emotions that I expected to find at the end of my life were there. I didn't feel sadness or fear or regret. Instead, I, I felt. I don't even know if there's a word for what I felt. I don't think there is. The closest I can get is satisfaction. Like, like if I died, my final thought would have been something along the lines of, all right, but you got to admit, I did all right. Of course, I was, I was on pretty good drugs at the time, so that was probably a big part of it. But I think there's more to it than that. There was this brief moment of epiphany where I realized that death wasn't cold and it wasn't ugly and it wasn't final. No, hear me out. I, I didn't have a fucking religious experience. Don't worry. Didn't see the face of God. Didn't ask Jesus for forgiveness or anything. I didn't become a fucking dualist. I, 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 I'm going to get a bit esoteric here, but I'm not going to go all spiritual on you because yes, death is an end. It's an end to continuity, but that doesn't mean it's the end of self and self is the part that matters. I mean, consider the nature of self. One might be tempted to define self as one's body and all that's contained within it, but that's obviously not right. A, a, fuck, a dead body has all the same stuff in it minus the self. So where is the self? Now, for the longest time, we tried to stick it into a soul or some other type of animating force, but science kept shitting on that concept until we had no choice but to flush it. Or at least those of us who were being intellectually honest had no choice but to flush it. In place of a soul, we found that self is an emergent property in the brain. Right, like, like, like self-awareness and self turned out to be the same thing. And as much of a blow to immortality as that was, there was a consolation prize hiding inside it. Because if self-awareness is self, then at least to some degree, so is awareness. Right, I'm not the only one who thinks about me. I, I certainly spend more time thinking about me than anybody else does. I mean, probably more than everybody else does put together, but I don't have a mental monopoly on me. Nobody does. So when I die, my awareness ends, but myself doesn't have to. My story doesn't have to. And I'm not just talking about echoing right through this show or through the Facebook post I put up or whatever. That's what I realized on the table. I can continue to grow and influence and do Right? There are plenty of historical examples of people who did way more after they died than when they were alive. Vincent Van Gogh, Karl Marx, Emily Dickinson, Edgar Allan Poe. Now, I'm not saying I'm fucking Van Gogh or Emily Dickinson, right? I, 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 I'm not, but I don't have to be. I just need to do enough to persist in a single mind. I need one person to think, I wonder what Noah would have said, thought, done. And then I can say and think and do. I get to live on. 
self isn't just a thing that happens inside of us. It's a thing that we project into the world. It's not self until we project it into the world. And that means that you, the part of you entirely contained within your body, are more than anything else, a steward of the world's memories of you. That's your purpose in so much as you have a purpose. Of course, this isn't going to be as comforting to most other people as it is to me, right? I freely admit that I'm coming from a place of extreme privilege here. If I died on that table, I'd have done it with way more strike throughs on my bucket list than most people get. And I would, for the lack of a better term, die louder than most people. You know, this, this kind of thing comes to no comfort at all. I'm sure to extreme loners or like, you know, people who have lost very young children. And it might be kind of terrifying for those people who will mostly be remembered by people who hate them. Right. I mean, by this logic, death is primarily the point where you lose control of your narrative and turning over your narrative to your enemies is as close to hell as atheists can get, I think. But it does offer a path. It offers up a reason to do good and give of yourself and be a person worth remembering. And it does it from first principles. It does away with that poisonous religious idea that somehow being a good person deep down inside counts. It gives you a reason to reconcile with anybody who you want to reconcile with and to forgive anybody who remotely deserves it and to respect everyone around you, if but for the self-interested knowledge that they are the future vessel of you. It gives you a reason to love conspicuously. And if none of that helps, just, I guess, try to die while you're on really good drugs. Now, a quick note that really doesn't belong here. I am not quite back to 100% yet, uh, so I'm going to hand the reins back over to Heath and Eli right now. Morgan cut it out, but I, I still have to take breaks to get all the way through a diatribe. I'll be back soon. But in the meantime, thanks so much to them. Uh, and thanks to everybody who's reached out. As I hope this diatribe makes clear, it meant everything to me.